We look at the most industrialized economy on the African continent, South Africa, contracting in the third quarter by 0.2%. Uh, that's the third quarter of this, this particular year, Q1.4%, Q2 0.6%. The forecasts were for a contraction of 0.1%. We're now going to head to Johannesburg. Uh, we're going to be speaking with the Africa economist for Bloomberg, uh, Yvonne Mango. Yvonne, good afternoon to you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, what do you make of, and good to see you again after seeing you in, uh, in Lume for the Africa Likewise. Financial Industry <laughs> Summit. Um, yes, what do you make of the economic growth numbers from South Africa? Well, we did expect it to be our weakest quarter, but we were surprised at the deepness of the contraction, and it showed that household consumption uh, declined for a second quarter. So basically, South African households are in recession. It also did show a decline for investment spending, um, and that both of those factors contributed to the downturn we saw in the third quarter. Uh, what is, uh, let's look at the sectors now, the um, sectors that grew and the ones that contracted, because I do want to get your thoughts on how they performed. It looks like the ones that contracted seem more important. So yeah, let's look at the contracting sector. So agriculture, 9.6%, uh, mm. construction, 28 manufacturing, 1.3%. Well, what do you make of these, these sectors that suffered? Because it looks like they're more important to economic growth. So we're especially concerned about the manufacturing uh, sector contracting as well as trade because those are two quite uh, significant sectors in terms of their contribution to GDP. Uh, construction, of course, is important as it reflects the amount of uh, investment that's taking place. Agriculture is an important uh, employer. Uh, so that decline uh, of that magnitude is also a concern. But, um, but the, the, those numbers, I uh, think, speak to the story uh, of that GDP contraction. The one bright spot was... Uh, uh, the financial services continue to grow. Uh, financial services is the biggest uh, sector that accounts for a quarter of GDP, um, but um, that was counted by the declines in the other sectors that you referred to. All right, and um, is it safe to say that there's still lingering effects from the COVID pandemic on the South African economy? That is fair. So a lot of the jobs um, that were lost during the pandemic, not all of them have uh, been uh, regained. Um, so yes, unemployment remains an issue. Uh, unemployment rate in South Africa is at 32 uh, percent. And um, that um, is a structural issue and it's persistent and un unlikely to uh, decrease significantly over the medium term, given the weakness of the growth outlook. Now, okay, I just want to quickly go back to the sectors that actually grew. Is, um, is the financial sector the only, the only highlights there for you? Because we did see growth in some other sectors uh, in the second quarter uh, of, uh, of the year. So what was of interest to us was to see electricity uh, sector actually grow. Very modest, um, less than 1% growth. But why it's of interest is because it's the first growth we've seen from the sector after five quarters of decline. And as you're probably aware, South Africa is facing some significant power outages, um, which is, of course, Im Im impacting industrial activity. So any lift we're seeing in electricity production, and we hope that it will be sustainable going forward. Um, but that was one notable um, growth that we saw from a sector that's struggled for several quarters. All right. So there are yeah, crucial elections uh, next year. You've already mentioned the jobless rates. Um, is unemployment the main priority for the for the government at this at this time? Yes, it's an, and it's an important focus, uh, as you can imagine, having one out of every three adults unemployed is, um, is of concern. Um, it's also contributed to the extension of the social grants by an additional year, um, given um, that um, high number of people don't, who don't receive regular employment. So it is an issue. The power outages as well, as I um, mentioned earlier, is something the government is um, working on um, and um, will also probably be an issue um, at the time of the elections, uh, given that there's not been no significant upturn. If anything, the intensity has seemed to deepen in terms of power outages over the past um, couple of years. Um, but that's certainly something uh, the um, authorities are seeking to remedy over the medium term. Now, I understand there was a, a surge in alternative energy imports in the second quarter of, of this year. How would you assess the reaction to the ESCOM load shedding? You already mentioned power issues earlier in one of your answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so how would you uh, assess that? 
So self-generation has become uh, one of the options um, in order to mitigate the impact of ESCOM's uh, power outages. So indeed, in the second quarter, we did see a significant increase in imports of solar panels. Part of it was um, as a result of the tax incentives uh, provided by the government earlier in the year uh, that contributed to that surge. Um, so that speaks to that shift away from ESCOM um, as a supplier, given that they're failing to meet demand to self-generation. Generation. And would you still, if we talk about the headwinds now, are, are power cuts still the major headwind for the South African economy going, looking, for, looking ahead? Yes. So two of the issues already mentioned, it's uh, the high unemployment, it's the power outages. But in addition to that, it's also a high interest rate environment. Uh, we don't see um, interest rates um, easing until the second half of next year. And uh, as a result of the high interest rates, we are seeing credit growth slow. It's contributed to the contraction we've seen in household consumption over two quarters. Um, so that certainly is a headwind that um, the uh, government will have to face going into the elections. Yeah, but the as far as uh, uh, Governor uh, Haniego is concerned, he's fo uh, you know focused directly on inflation, right? So you're not. I think you just said a moment ago, you're not seeing any holds or rate cuts going into the new year. No. So as you rightly said, the central bank is focused on inflation targeting. Um, we did see a pickup in inflation over the past couple of months, um, which um, is a reason why um, any rate cuts will be delayed. So if anything, they will be holding for longer. Um, and hence our expectation that if there are any cuts, it will be later in 2024. So, you know, big year 2024, we've got South Africa elections, UK elections, US elections. It's a, it's a huge year. There's so much going on. We're going to be very busy as we always are here at Horizon News, and I'm sure you will as well. What's your outlook for next year for the South African economy? So we are expecting a pickup in growth to 1.1%. That's from 0.6% this year. It's still uh, way below uh, the 2% long-term average. Um, the pickup will be driven by the investment we are seeing in the energy sector. Um, but as I said, still not um, strong enough to create the jobs that are required to bring down that high unemployment rate. A whole lot to look forward to. Uh, Yvonne uh, Mango, thank you so much for joining us. The Africa Economist uh, for Bloomberg. We appreciate your time. Thank you.